<laughs> anyway, okay, this one. And then I have to do it. Nah, that's it. Okay. Hi, this is Gerdy Vervoer, their Great League Guiding Coach, with Callista Ocean. With Callista Ocean, and she is has the honor of being my first interviewee. Is that a word? Yes. 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 Interviewee for uh, my new video series. You don't have to be Bear Grylls to enjoy nature. She's not Bear Grylls, that's obvious. Yeah. So I have my questions here and I'm not going to follow them, each and every one of them, but I am going to ask you first question. Yes. Tell me a bit, a bit, tell them a little bit about yourself. Who are you? I am a, an adventurer, I, uh, and a writer from California, from okay. the United States. Where are we? Uh, we are in Austria uh -huh. and uh, enjoying some nice rainy weather by the lake. <laughs> yeah. So um, what else? So I'm a writer, I blog, I'm in the midst of some indefinite travel, some long-term travel. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing the world and meeting new people and seeing friends. Yeah. Before you started doing all this, what did you do? I was a business consultant and project manager for most of my life. So mm -hmm. worked in, in corporate mm -hmm. America. Yeah. So this series is all about um, me finding ordinary people, basically, um, that will help me inspire other ordinary people to just go into nature and into the mountains and all that kind of thing. So what is your first what was your first connection to nature hmm. the, the first thing that comes to mind is camping mm -hmm. so when i was probably in grade school maybe eight nine ten years old my mom used to love to take us camping uh in california yeah there was a river with campgrounds near it and we would camp and mm -hmm. hike in the river and hike in the river yeah how does one do that uh, you wear tennis shoes, so you don't slip, almost uh -huh. like you're hiking. And we would, it was, it wasn't a deep river. Okay. It was kind of more of a stream. Yeah. And w where it would get deep, we'd walk out and around okay. sometimes. Or whatever. But yeah, we'd hike down the river and yeah. then hike back I've to our campsite. I've never done that. Sounds like fun. It was a lot of fun. Okay. We'd sing and hike. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can sing and hike. Yeah. We hiked together yesterday, and uh, I told her to sing in a certain point, yeah. and she blanked out. You're not going to make me sing during the interview, though, right? <laughs> okay. Well, you're giving me idea. <laughs> was going into nature something you did regularly as a kid? Was no. that a thing? It was something we did during the summers, uh -huh. maybe once or twice a year. Okay. And otherwise, no. So if you, um, like, so there was hiking in the, in the river, but not... Like the hiking I do, going no, no, nothing like it. And for those of you who don't know me, I live in Austria. I work as a hiking guide and a coach, and I take people into the mountains with me. So that's a different kind of hiking. I've never hiked in a river. Hmm. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah. So, so what age were you about when you were doing that? Uh, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Did you kept Did you keep on doing that, or was there just a lull in between until you took up hiking again? I don't remember doing it much in junior high, and definitely there was a lull in hiking. Uh -huh. My next connection with nature was more sailing and ocean stuff. Okay. So in high school, I was on the ocean more than in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And when did you take up hiking? About three or four years ago. Well, you haven't been hiking that long then. No. No. But it's become a part of my life, which is pretty cool. So it's how did that happen? Uh, I actually dated someone that was super into hiking. Uh -huh. So our second date was a local trail in California. Oh, wow. And he brought breakfast. We met at six in the morning. Wow. And went for a hike along the coast in California uh -huh. and had breakfast. And, and then from there on, it was every week, basically, because it was something he really enjoyed doing. And I found out I enjoyed it. I okay. didn't know it was something I enjoyed. Yeah. So. so what about hiking is it that you enjoy? I think it's a slow down from the the fast pace of the rest of my life. So mm -hmm. I think just getting out and walking versus yeah. being in a car or constantly on a schedule. It's it's uh -huh. nice to get out for a couple hours and just walk around. Yeah. Fresh air, mm -hmm. beautiful scenery. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you, you, you that's what you like about hiking. What makes it something that you keep going back to? 
I think uh, a couple things. One is that it's good exercise. I mean, I like to stay in good shape. Yeah. And, and when I do exercise, I like to do something I enjoy doing mm -hmm. versus going to a gym. I have no interest in lifting weights uh, or no, doing I'm aerobics. Yeah, no. So uh, it's a nice way to me, for me to feel connected to my body and connected to my soul. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. being out in nature, definitely more uh, spiritual than sitting in a gym. Or yeah. Um, So yeah, it's that and just the spaciousness of it, having space to move around. Mm -hmm. What makes it spiritual for you? Trees, snow, um, animals, which you don't get a lot of in the city. So mm -hmm. hearing birds singing or um, even though they can make me jumpy, like <laughs> lizards or rabbits or, you know, things yeah. that you'll mm -hmm. hear, or see in the bushes. Um, so I think it's the noises and the sights and just the, the, it's quiet too, mm -hmm. compared to the city. So I think it's the quiet. Yeah. It's a chance to be still. Even if I'm moving, there's a stillness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did something quite extraordinary over the last couple of months. I did. I yeah. walked the Camino in Spain. Yeah. yeah. So a, a lot of that was in nature and hiking. Some of it was along roads and highways, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, 825 kilometers from uh -huh. Irún to Santiago and and definitely the, the hiking I've done for the past few years gave me the gear uh -huh. and the stamina to, mm -hmm. to walk every day. So yeah. it was cool. So does that, that ex, uh, just, just being on the Camino, make, does that make you an extraordinary hiker? Because we're talking to ordinary people here. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think what was extraordinary about it that most people don't get a chance to do in daily life is that mm -hmm. I was walking every day. Yeah. Like in my corporate life there was no way I had the time to mm -hmm. walk for hours every day yeah um, so that probably was uh, different about it but as far as I didn't have to be a specific kind of athlete or you know there wasn't a whole lot of training that I had to do to just mm. be able to get out and walk yeah isn't it, and isn't it something that uh, even if you don't have training you can sort of train on the trail yes if you if you're <laughs> <laughs> smart enough, which I wasn't at the beginning, to walk shorter distances and just get yeah. used to walking every day, definitely. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of people I met that did no training or had done very little hiking mm -hmm. or walking. Yeah. Um, but if you're willing to keep your own pace and just go the distance your body is mm -hmm. ready to go, then yeah. yeah, I think it's something anybody could do. Yeah. How long did it take you to do these 800 and what kilometers? And it was 825, it, and it depends on which guidebook you read. I've seen 817, but yeah. it's 800 plus. Uh -huh. um, and that doesn't include the times I got lost or... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, and it took me close to seven weeks, so 47 days. Wow. But the, again, that was because I kept my own pace and I mm -hmm. was walking for about half a day. Yeah. So, so does that mean, uh, well, you said you're a writer, you're a coach, you're a yoga teacher, and you... Um, and you left your corporate job, right? I did. Yeah. So it's this is not something you would be able to do in one go if you right. were still working a regular job. Right. And I'm sure you met people who were doing stretches. Yeah. I yeah. met people that come and walk a piece of it for a week or two every yeah. year. Yeah. 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 So guys, you can do something like that when you're just... Yeah. When you figure, when you consider yourself an ordinary person. This is an extraordinary, ordinary person. Yes. <laughs> Maybe... A a bit of a weird question, but um, how do you like to hike? In a sense of uh, by yourself or in with friends or a particular kind of hike? Uh, I th it really varies a lot. I think probably uh -huh. my favorite is similar to what we did yesterday is getting out into the mountains and uh -huh. having a little bit of challenge to it. Okay, so what, um, what did we do yesterday? So we climbed, I'm trying to remember how many meters about 900. About 900 meters and then came down that same distance. Mm -hmm. But it was in a mountain setting in the Alps. Yeah. So we had snowy covered mountains and tree covered mountains. And yeah. um, I think ascending can be a challenge, although you showed me how to make it a little less challenging. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think the climbing part is exciting to me. Um, the views are exciting to me when you're in the mountains. Mm -hmm. So 
not that I didn't enjoy the Camino and some of the pretty days like along the coast or maybe yeah. along lakes. That can be pretty too. Mm -hmm. But I definitely like a little bit of challenge. And then I haven't done a whole lot of hiking, so I don't tend to hike in the mountains alone. Uh -huh. I would be comfortable hiking the Camino alone or hiking some of the local trails along the coast in mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. I don't usually head into the mountains alone. I like to go with a friend. Mm -hmm. And I ha and I do have friends here yeah. and in California that yeah. like getting up into the hills. So yeah. so what makes it uncomfortable for you to do that by yourself? I still feel like I have a lot to learn okay. about what I would do in emergency situations. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't know, I, I might be comfortable if I'd been in the same area and knew a trail really well. Yeah. But if I'm in an area where I don't know the trail, because what if I got off the trail or mm -hmm. got turned around? Um, so unless I'm really familiar with yeah. an area, I like to at least have a friend and maybe a little more information or mm -hmm. be with somebody that knows where we are. Yeah. So. Is this something you, you're um, going to learn? I'd like to. And so I'd like to think over time, you know, I know there's courses. I know there's guides, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. So... Uh, I feel like in the last few years I've learned a lot mm -hmm. and I have a lot of good gear which helps make yeah. me comfortable mm -hmm. in hiking. Yeah. Um, and that took a while to kind of pick up a piece here and mm -hmm. learn a little bit there. Yeah. Um, but I still feel like part of it's because I was doing the corporate thing until mm -hmm. a few yeah. months ago. So I was hiking once a week. Mm -hmm. Now that I have more time, you know, I'd like to think that I'll get more experienced yeah. and maybe have more time to learn more. Yeah. So. Because it would be exciting to me to be able to do maybe more of a mountainous thing or maybe yeah. even a couple day thing mm -hmm. um, without a guider to go on yeah. my own. Because I do like the solitude of hiking on my own too. Yeah, yeah, I get that because I like hiking with friends, but I, I th it's I like the the change, you know, the the variation of going by myself and doing it with friends. Yeah, and I find that when hiking with friends, it can be a challenge to keep your own pace. Yeah. And not start running at their pace and then ha dying halfway the up the mountain or something. Right. Yeah. So and I like to stop and take photos exactly. or just sit. And, yeah. you know, and, and when you're with someone else, it's kind of like, well, I don't want to slow them down. Or they may not want to just sit here with me and be quiet. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get that. If you were, you know, somebody is watching this and uh, is thinking about getting into hiking, what is the one piece of advice you would give them? The first piece of, of advice I'd actually give them is make sure you've got the right shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the shoes so, makes you say that? The first two times I went hiking, I mm -hmm. had boots that were really too small for my feet. Uh -huh. So while I enjoyed the scenery and the company and, you know, enjoyed the experience, it my feet were killing me by okay. the time I was done. Yeah. And uh, after those times, I went and bought a pair of hiking shoes, yeah. hiking boots. Yeah. And made all the difference in the world you know because it just made things more comfortable so okay. i could enjoy without worrying about that so what is it that people have to pay attention to when they're buying hiking boots uh, buying it uh, buying them a little bit big because uh -huh. if especially if you go for a couple mm -hmm. hours or a half a day your yeah. feet are gonna swell a little bit and if your shoes are really tight it's gonna mm -hmm. be really painful yeah um, I think nowadays there's a lot of outdoor stores so mm -hmm. there's people that can help you make sure that you yeah. know that you understand yeah what's important and they have little things that you can stand on in the store so you can feel what it's like to yeah sort of imitation trails yeah 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 mm -hmm. so um so shoes would be important and then um i just th I, I just think you know if you find other friends or groups of people that mm -hmm. are into hiking you can get great information online yeah. or in facebook groups or whatever yeah. about good trails and a lot of information on whether they're hard or easy yeah. or yeah um so I, I do use those, especially if I'm in an area I know. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I do too. Some areas they have like ranger stations in the yeah. U.S. where you can go, uh, let them know you're hiking. You might need a permit and also find out which trails are maybe best for you. Yeah. Based on. Yeah. It. So yeah. that and would we, be my advice. Yeah. Here in Austria, we don't have those ranger stations. And I don't know, not, there's not many countries in Europe that do. No. But we have tourist agencies where you can go and pick up that kind of information. Cool. A good tourist agency will have that information. What is the one thing in your backpack? No, let us let me rephrase that. What is the one thing that you always carry in your backpack? doesn't have to be gear related, but just something that you always have with you. Or maybe something that you brought to the Camino, especially because you wanted to keep to have that with you. 
Um, I, I, it's probably just different. It, it wouldn't be one thing, but having maybe layers or, you know, okay. that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So yeah. I might be wearing a tank top, but have a jacket and a raincoat or something mm -hmm. in my in my gear. A ponchos or raincoats are always handy <laughs> because you never know. We've got this a little rain today when it's going to yeah. start raining. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say some sort of layers. I've usually got what I'm wearing, but maybe something yeah. I could change into yeah. and be more comfortable. Okay. So there's no funny... Um, what you call it, mascot or something in your? No, I, I often carry um, a journal and a pen because okay. I like to write. Yeah. So I have like a little waterproof journal yeah, type yeah, yeah. thing and a mm -hmm. pen. So yeah. that might be the only yeah. well, non-gear related <laughs> thing that I'm carrying. Okay, final, final two questions. One, um, is there a book about hiking or nature that you really like and would recommend to people? <sighs> Yeah, I didn't ask you this before. No. I'm, I'm sort of blindsiding you here. Or I don't, yeah, I don't know if there's a book about hiking or nature. Isn't that or interesting? Because I probably would love to read some. Mm -hmm. um, uh, probably the book that led me to adventure, which has nothing to do with uh, hiking, that's all right. would be Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. And that led you to adventure, you said. Yeah, I just love that she was out in the world and experiencing uh -huh. different things. And mm -hmm. so she's definitely one of my favorite writers. Yeah. And so Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes. Okay. Yeah. One uh, of my favorite books. Yeah. I, I've read it. I've read it. I liked it. Yeah. And final question. This is going to be as hard then as the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, so there's per perhaps two questions that I actually should send to people beforehand. There's movies. I've been okay. more inspired by movies okay. than books. Okay, tell me. Movies. So I saw Wild yeah. about Cheryl Strayed. Which is based on a book. Yes, mm -hmm. which I have the book but haven't had time to read it. But now that okay. I'm in the world, yeah. maybe I will. Mm -hmm. So great movie yep. and very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the Camino, what inspired me, there's actually a documentary called okay. Six Ways to Santiago. Oh, all right. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and that I saw about four years ago and finally got to walk the Camino this year. But that had everything to do with me deciding that's something I need to do someday. There you go. So. Okay, so books or movies? Yeah. I'm going to ask that question then. Yes. And is there a quote that you want to leave with people? <laughs> that's <laughs> a <Ta -da>. difficult one. <laughs> no time to prep for this. Let's see. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite quotes, mm -hmm. uh, old one, but I, since I was a teenager that I've loved, yeah. Shakespeare. Okay. To thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night, the day thou canst not be then false to any man. But to okay. thine own self be true is the essence of that. W and what was the rest? Uh, to, to thine own self be true, mm -hmm. and then it follows. Oh, now see, now I've forgotten it. <laughs> and then thou cannot be false to any man. Okay. I like so, that. Yeah. yeah. The other one I love is, uh, I think it's John Keats. Okay. Is beauty is truth, truth is beauty, that is all you know and all you need to know. I can see them to be hiking related. Yeah. Because a large part, what I get out of hiking is, you know, going into the mountains and be true to myself. Yeah. So. And then beauty. And beauty, of course. Beauty is where we find our truth, yeah. I think. So. I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. This wasn't so bad, <laughs> was it? No, it's, it's been lovely. Yeah, so now you can just start doing your own videos. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys this was it this uh as always uh, i hope you enjoyed it this is gary for word dare greatly coach and guide saying um dare greatly and be safe out there bye